Hello and welcome to Kickoff Commentary and day number 8 of 32 teams in 32 days and today we, we move on to the AFC North and the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are a team that had a big offseason, their biggest in years. Why is that? Marvin Lewis is finally no longer the team's head coach. Marvin Lewis took a very terrible Bengals team and brought them up to a better level than they had been in the past. However, as with most head coaches, eventually his time was up. I think the clock struck midnight on Marvin Lewis as a good coach for the Bengals. The moment they lost that wildcard game to the Steelers where everything went wrong, the Jeremy Hill fumble, Vontez Perfect trying to kill Antonio Brown, Joey Porter on the field, just a, just a dark day for the Bengals. And since then, they've just kind of been in stasis with Lewis, not really moving in either direction. The team finally fired him. It was a much needed move. They had to do something. They did not hire Hugh Jackson, thankfully, and brought in Zach Taylor, one of McVay's assistants, for the, the, the meme of sorts of, if you know Sean McVay, you're going to get hired. It kind of happened this offseason. So with all that being said, the Bengals roster isn't entirely different than usual. AJ Green is going to be there whenever he's healed from his injury due to practicing on a terrible field. Not a such a terrible blow for the Bengals to have to practice on the wrong field, and that causes their best player to get injured. But either way, let's get into the Bengals' record this season. They start off the season in Seattle, and I can't see them winning that game. The Seahawks, especially early season, are a tough team to beat on the road. Uh, very many good teams would have trouble with that game. The following week, they have a home game against the San Francisco 49ers, and I think that's going to be a close one, but I think I have to give the edge to San Fran there, and I predict it'll be a victory for the 49ers, moving them down to 0-2. After this, they travel up to Buffalo to play against the Bills, and again, I just don't think that's a game that they win. I don't think it's impossible. These are two teams that are both in going similar positive directions. I just think the home game advantage is what gives Buffalo the edge there. Week 4, they travel to Pittsburgh, and it kills me to say it, because I'm admittedly not a big Steelers guy. But on the road, with how often they've been unable to beat the Steelers, I think I have to give Pittsburgh the edge at home here. Really rough schedule for the Bengals. They're having to play f three road games in their first four, dropping them into 0-4. After that, home against the Arizona Cardinals. I think they do get the win there against Kyler Murray, the rookie. It's possible the Cardinals surprise me, and the air raid is as good as Mahomes was last season out of the gates, but it takes a while for a rookie quarterback to get in gear. Cincinnati's at home. They should be starting to settle into their own offense by this point, and I predict that they're probably going to get a victory in that game. After that, they travel out to Baltimore. I don't see them winning that game either. Ravens are, despite being worse on defense with losing C.J. Mosley, they added Earl Thomas. It's still going to be a pretty good football team, and road games are hard to win in the NFL. At home against the Jaguars, I think that's probably a win for Cincinnati. The talent they have should be able to get them the home victories in that game. Jacksonville is a team that I just honestly don't have a, a strong read on either way on how they'll be this season. Two years ago in the AFC Championship game last year, back to being the bad Jaguars. So I'll give the Bengals the edge on that one. After that, they travel to Los Angeles to play against the Rams, and they're simply outmatched by a better team. I don't think the student beats the master on this one and moves them down to 2-6 and six heading into their Week 9 bye. They come out of that with a home game against the Baltimore Ravens, and again, I think the Ravens simply have the edge here. Gotta give Baltimore the victory in this one, moving them down to 2-7. and seven. After this, they travel out to Oakland, and if Antonio Brown is healthy and does play this season, I think he could be a difference maker in that game. Derek Carr is a pretty good NFL quarterback. R road games, again, in the NFL are hard to win. I think that's a loss there, too. It's going to move them down to 2-8. and eight. After that, though, I think they do finally get some measure of revenge at home and are able to defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers, getting their third one of the season. The Bengals then run into what I think is a buzzsaw of a New York Jets team on their best run of the season in Week 13, so I think that they lose that game as well. Like I said in the last video, I think the Jets are going to be hitting their stride at this point in the season, rattling off several wins in a row, and so I do predict a loss here for the Bengals in a game that could be pretty close. After that, they travel to Cleveland against a Browns team that I think is on the rise. Like I said, uh, I think at some point in one of these videos that the Browns are a team with a lot of talent on offense. They're just, I think, better than Cincinnati, so I, I can't see the Bengals winning that one on the road. After that, they are at home against the Patriots. The Patriots, Bengals aren't going to win that one. They travel to Miami, which I think could be a win. Should be a win, at least. I, I don't see why it wouldn't be there. Miami, like I've said many, many times, not a good football team. That's a win for the Bengals. And then they, I think we'll lose a home game to the Browns. So my prediction is 4-12 and for Cincinnati. And that's not a harsh 4-12 and intentionally. This is a team that is taking a massive leap forward with firing Marvin Lewis. But with that said, they have a pretty rough schedule, and they're a team that's going into uncharted territory for the first time in a very, very long time. I hope it works out for them, but I don't think this season we're going to see a lot of a lot of improvement, and maybe a bit of a backslide for the Cincinnati Bengals. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments section. I would love to hear from Bengals fans. What am I getting right about your team? What am I getting completely wrong? This has been Kickoff Commentary, and tomorrow we'll come back with the AFC North for day number nine. Have a wonderful day.